about the tension in Nigeria. When you enter the main, you know, cacos in Nigeria, the internal affairs of Nigeria, you will see that there is something cooking. There is a tension ongoing right now. And the only thing we're attending the federal government is that make sure your police stay clear from the protest. Make sure the military stay clear from the protest. Because from the answers, I learned a lot of things. People were not destroying something before military started shooting. It was when military started coming against people who are protesting, that was when they started, you know, burning buses, burning police stations. So the police should just stay there. After all, you people are suffering. Police, we are all victims. So we are all victims. After all, anytime I speak to a police, ma'am, he must complain that if I die today now, uh, federal government will not take care of my family. If I die today now, federal government will not take care of my children. So even police are afraid. How much are they paying them? How much are they earning? They themselves deserve a better life. And that is why we are saying, you people must take them. We want to start saying this on time, before the day of protest. Let it not be that there is somebody that did not hear that we say, take them. Protest is a fundamental human right. Protest is the right of everyone. It's a civil something. They are not carrying guns into the street. If they want to block the street, it is a civil right. If they want to block a rock, it's a civil right. If they want to block National Assembly, it's a civil right. And when police will try to shoot gun, let me tell you again, a hungry man is an angry man. A hungry man is not afraid of anything. So police should stay there. They did not say that people did not say. If they send you, carry your motor, go another side. Or the best option I want to say, in so many areas, I know sometimes police do it in Nigeria. If you want to go to where people are protesting, guide them. Guide them, make sure that the protest is not hijacked. If possible, buy them water. Go with them. Because at the end, it's still police that are going to enjoy it. The minimum wage that the Nigerian Labour Congress is fighting, who is going to enjoy it? The police, how much are they paying you people? 50,000? Military that is carrying gun, fighting Boko Haram in the bush. Nigerian soldiers, some of them are receiving 80,000, 70,000, 50,000. So this struggle is for everybody. And let me tell you, so many people are saying, no, these people are trying to keep Nigeria at war. This protest is not all about keeping Nigeria at war. Because we are about protesting against people who are marching on your heads. You can't go to good hospital, no good school. Their children are in America. Nothing is going on in that country. They will build school. Their children will not go to that school. They will build hospital. Their children will not go to that hospital. They will do everything and loot your money. They would see if a slave did not repair, that slave does not deserve pity. So when I hear that the federal government, that they are trying to organize another protest, so that when people will be protesting, stop the bad government, stop bad government, stop bad government, then they will now mobilize people that will come and say, we need a good government or we need a Tinubu government. That is their plan. That is what they are planning to do. But you know what? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because all their strategies, all their effort, yesterday I learned that they, they, they released some millions of naira to give some people, some priests, I don't want to mention a mom or all those things because I'm not here to, you know, cause hatred. I'm here to just state the fact, the information that is happening. So the federal government are giving so many people money who are imams for, for them to be, you know, to be able to tell their members, do not come out for protests. Do not come out for protests. But you know what? It is over. It is too late. It is too late. And the best thing they, 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 they try to do is the worst thing. So you cannot just come out and begin to bribe people. See? If you hold your money next year, you won't even see food to buy in Nigeria. See, people who are in the urban area, in Lagos, in Abuja, you are living in an urban city. You don't know what is going on in Nigeria. I am telling you, you don't know. What is going on in Nigeria is not on the internet space. Go to rural areas. Go to what is happening in the rural areas. Yesterday, I was telling you people that in my village where I came from, for almost one to two months, they did not go to farm because of kidnappers in the bush. You won't see it on national newspaper. You won't see it on national television. What is going on in Nigeria is not being seen. Nobody is hearing it. People are suffering. People are in pain. And no one is talking about it. You see, Lagos is not Nigeria. Abuja is not Nigeria. If you are judging the standard of Nigeria with Lagos and Abuja, you don't know what you are doing. So if you are in Lagos, Abuja, Portacot, all these metropolitan cities, see, when they are talking about Nigeria, keep quiet because you don't even know anything about Nigeria. We are talking about Nigeria in Benue, where people don't own their community. Bandits will come and sack them. Terrorists will sack them. The only people that remain will working under bandits. They pay tax to bandits. Before you cultivate, you pay. You went to harvest, you pay. That is what is going on in Nigeria. And people don't want to realize that we are dying. This is not only about making Nigeria one or the other. This is all about people are killing you. 
Why should children hospital in the north full? Why should they be full? Because of malnutrition. People are dying. Why should they be full? And in the ancestral home, there is gold there. And people are mining that gold and taking it abroad. Let me read some comments. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, where I stopped was Onye Onye Kwendu Isini. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Um, in here, Nacho. Good morning. Watching from Owe. Thanks for joining. Dainel Ago. He said, hopefully, they wouldn't announce the date for the protest. Thanks for joining. Join Ogochuku. Thanks for joining. Kenneth. Okorodu, thanks for joining. John Okotuku, good morning. Thanks for joining. Chedema Okereke, say, are you fighting to keep Nigeria one or what? Are you joining hands to keep Nigeria? So as I was saying, this is not on the back keeping Nigeria one. Hmm? People are dying. It's not on the back keeping Nigeria one. So let me receive this call from another person. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome, my brother. How are you doing? I am fine. Please tell the viewers your name and where you are calling from, sir. Oh, this is Ben calling from USA. Okay, thanks, sir. Thanks for joining. So you must have heard everything that we are talking about. Give us your opinion and what you think about it. I mean, uh, I want to talk about the protest that or the revolution, you know, that is about to come to Nigeria. And my own is kind of advice, all right? Okay. Uh, I will start from advising the military. I will start from there. Um... If you're a military man listening to this platform, um, this is advice like a human to human, all right? Mm. You're human and you understand the plight of Nigerians and the youths and, you know, the citizens and you know everything that is going on, all mm. right? I will use America as a case study. In America, all right, people go to serve their country, all right, mm. yeah. because of some, because they want to serve for benefits, mm. all right? So, because they love their country and they want to serve, mm. all right? And when you serve, you serve for four years, you come out, you still get benefit for life, mm. all right? And some people decide, I want my daughter or my son to go to uh, uh, school, so the government will take care of that. They go and serve. The government is when when you serve, you get, all right? Mm. They serve, and the government takes care of their family proper. But in Nigeria, all right, the Nigerian military, they don't gain enough. How much are they paying them? 50. Even if they are paying you as a military man, 200,000 naira. Can I ask you, how much is 200,000 converted to dollars? It's just about one grand, right. 120 dollars. Good. 100 or something dollars. But the one sending you to that bush, all right, to some business forest to waste your life for nothing, all right, mm. they make trillions of money. Mm. But you, the one protecting them, protecting them, they live your life, they damage your life, they use you, they manipulate you and call you, hey, you are the soldier. They just give you weapon and give you this thing. Meanwhile, they are, they are the ones sponsoring the Boko Haram, the bandits, hmm. well sophisticated armed hmm. weapons, all right? Yeah. And they give you something just to make you feel along. Protect them. The ones that are highly protected, they use them for their own personal security, hmm. not even the security of Nigeria. Hmm. Does he want it? Does he want your life? Absolutely not. So when you see, because you're serving, you don't want to come out, all right, because of probably mutiny or something. If you see your brothers, the ones you call bloody civilians, hmm. someone this courage to come out to fight because they're the ones doing the real fighting. Yeah. In the real sense, you as a military man is supposed to fight for your country to be better. Hmm. Look at Niger. Who is taking care of Niger now? Is it not the military? Yeah. Making and creating developing Niger. All right. Now, let's talk about Nigerians. You're supposed to be the one developing and say, you know what? Let's support these people. Let's fish out these bad governors. Let's fish out these bad leaders. All right. Hmm. If you come to America as a policeman, now let me pause on the military. Let's go to the police officers too. Because these are the ones they use to perpetrate all this evil. To ask them when they go, they shoot. They don't care. Because they feel like Nigerians are Nigerians are citizens, their life doesn't work nothing. Um, when the people rise, Nigeria will rise. And you know it is a process, and this is how it used to begin. So what I'm trying to tell everyone is that this, pro this protest is not only about Nigeria. It's only about yourself, we that are suffering. We are just victims. We are victims. As a citizen of a country, if you don't have money, you're supposed to go to school without money. As a citizen of a country, you are sick. You are supposed to go to hospital without anyone. 
you know, borrowing your money because you're a citizen. You know what it means to be a citizen. If Nigerians know what the meaning of citizen is, you see this revolution they are preparing, they will just start it tomorrow. How these politicians have turned us, turned us upside down. They have psychoconditioned us to believing about what we think that a country is not. Um, Saniu, God's sweet, good morning. Thanks for joining. Same here, sir. Um, Sahid Raj, good morning. Say, so, good men, you will learn in a hard way. Go and make your incompetent OB joint governor of Igbo land. In addition, go and mend your, your arid Igbo land. I don't know what you are talking about. Please, um, uh, uh, Raji, I don't really know. I did not understand what you are really writing, but it's important for us to talk. Let me educate you about some things because what we are talking about has nothing to do with tribe. Let me tell you something. Me and you, we are the victims. An Igbo man, an Aosa man, Yoruba man, a man, nobody should be your enemy. Your enemy are the politicians. It could be Igbo politicians, it could be Aosa politicians, it could be Yoruba politicians. These are the things we're supposed to be looking at. Me and you, we are just common victims suffering in the streets. If you come and you begin to attack your fellow victims, no, it's not supposed to be that, okay? We have to change our mentality. We have to emancipate ourselves. We have to change our thinking. I don't have anything against any woman. I don't have anything against Yoruba man. I don't have anything against our man because we are all victims. We are all brainwashed before. It is time for us to arise. If we do not speak one voice, we will continue to suffer what we are suffering.